Hello and welcome to the latest of my deep dive videos. This one into the winter solstice, which occurs on the 21st of December. In most of the time zones of the world, the summer solstice occurs on the 22nd of December in Australia. In terms of the significance of the Western tropical calendar, this is the last quarter of the year. It's when the sun makes its way into the sign of Capricorn, so it's the last cardinal quadrant. The Western tropical zodiac is made up of four quadrants, beginning with Aries, that's on the vernal equinox. Then we have the summer solstice with Cancer, the autumnal equinox with Libra, and then finally the winter solstice with Capricorn. So this begins the last 13 weeks of the astrological year. So it's a really important event. And what I'm going to tell you in this video is share the event will uh, for based on Greenwich, Universal Central Time, on the screen. And I'm going to outline to you the significance of that, uh, not just in terms of the Sun moving into Capricorn and the last quadrant. Cardinal energy is very much to do with being very purposeful, action orientated. It's about leadership, but also how when that event occurs, however planetary influences are informing the picture. And there are some really giant influences that are, are really playing into the narrative of this 13 week period. Then I'm going to go on to describe how this will be for each of the 12 zodiac signs. And you can watch that in terms of your sun or your ascendant, the choice is yours. Now, if you're new to my channel, I would be honored if you would subscribe to me. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. You can also subscribe for your free daily written horoscope by seeing the link underneath this video and get that fired to your device each morning. I've been writing these for over 25 years and that gives you uh, an insight of where the planetary movements are for each day, but also in terms of your zodiac sign, sun or ascendant. Also, with year 2022 almost upon us, if you've yet to get your personal forecast for next year, based on your time, date and place of birth, you can do that, that now. And also get the last few days of this year free. And also a character analysis and 30% off by seeing the link beneath this video. These are totally unique to each individual person and can give you some searing insights beyond what a zodiac forecast can bring for next year. So on the screen now, you can see where this event occurs in your part of the world. Now, in terms of London and Greenwich, the event occurs on the 21st of December at 3.59 and 10 seconds p.m. And you can see with the wheel on the screen, we have an ascendant in the sign of Cancer. Cancer, also a cardinal sign, very much about protection of our environment, a sense of security. It can be about more emotional relating. It's of course governed by the moon. Now the sun on the other hand, just moving into the sign of Capricorn on this event, that's governed by the uh, planet Saturn. Saturn's very much about boundaries. It's about structures, buildings. It can be about more established uh, ways things have been done, so traditions. It can be very conservative, it can be restrictive, it can be difficult, but it does have lots of upsides. And those sometimes I feel can get downplayed a little bit in astrology. When I'm doing one-to-one -one consultations with clients, when Saturn moves over a key house or planet or position, if they've really worked at their situation, it often leads to some kind of major breakthrough. So we must always see that the sign of Capricorn rewards a lot of hard work. But the sun moving on to nought degrees Capricorn is known as an earth point. Earth points in astrology are very important. So if your birthday is on the 21st, the 22nd of December, this is a particularly important event for you. It gives you an opportunity to really take a firmer grip on your life direction. Of course, we've had the sun moving through the sign of Sagittarius, which is 
very much to do with expansion and investigation and curiosity can be to do with travel uh, and we still have Mars in this location and you can see that Mars uh, is actually at five degrees in Sagittarius but it is conjunct the part of fortune but the part of fortune Mars and the Sun on this particular location and time are all in the sixth health a house of physical health interesting isn't it with the latest development with Omicron but we also have the position of the moon and the moon is located at this time in the sign of cancer which of course is where it governs but we do have uh, almost a, a very powerful polarity between the moon on one side of the heavens in the second house of everyday consumption good food good wine money appreciation of creature comforts quite a Tauran energy on the other side of the heavens we have Pluto facing the moon and this is quite a challenging aspect so over the next 13 weeks I think there's going to be a challenge to us in terms of getting what we need in our emotional and personal lives with what may be due to you know the conditions that are changing all the time uh, it is imposed upon us or how uh, the general uh, trend of direction of travel with uh, the activities in the wider world we are going to see Pluto very much about power in Capricorn and of course with Venus alongside it Venus in retrograde can be a, a very uh, intense and poignant link with Pluto can uh, bring a lot of soul searching around relationships or how we relate but having moon opposite venus is very generous and, and, and lovely having moon opposite pluto is uh, a really tough one it's a, a kind of a polar opposite energy and it could mean that we find ourselves really challenged how we can deal with this uh, sudden change in events that's presented itself in recent times Strangely, Jupiter, the planet of growth, optimism, and in the sign of Aquarius, is right on the 10th house of this chart, and you would think that would be a good news story. That would be a sense of optimism building up. But if we look a little bit closer, in a disassociate square, the north node is squaring with Jupiter, and the north node is actually in the 12th house, very much to do with emotional and spiritual health. Ceres, an asteroid, is conjunct uh, the position of the North Node and that is directly squaring Jupiter so uh, however much we would prefer the situation to be different I think we are being challenged by a reality we have Saturn in Aquarius in the, the ninth house of travel believe it or not restriction squaring Uranus in Taurus in the 11th house of humanity now we, we know these two have been coming back into a very tense and, and very, uh, a very uh, abrasive right angle and it actually peaks on the 24th of this month, later this week on Christmas Eve. But it's going to be hanging around for about the first nine weeks of 2022 and it is coming back later in the year as well. So... Um, we're even going to have a, a little show of it within three degrees uh, as late as December next year. So I think that might be a lot to do with some of the limitations that we're experiencing. But because Uranus is the planet of truth, but also of radicalism, don't be surprised if some people push back hard against any restrictions. And we are, are going to see potentially more inverted commas people expression expressing their disquiet about any uh, physical limitations by perhaps taking to the streets we do have also and this is very very important and it's something that's often ignored in astrology and it shouldn't be if you look uh, in the fifth house which is very much to do with joys and pleasures we have the midpoint in the sign of libra now, ordinarily, a Libran midpoint in the fifth house would lead to sort of some enchanting diplomatic uh, encounters. But this particular midpoint is conjunct the fixed star Algorab, and that is not an easy fixed star. 
This can be to do with destruction, malevolence. It can be to do with lying. Well, what a surprise in terms of British politics. Um, we also have uh, fiendishness and greed. All the things that have seemed to have been dominating the headlines in Britain anyway, in terms of people in public service, those issues are going to be forced out into the open. And because that midpoint also squares up to the planet of communication, Mercury in the seventh house of this chart. So that's seeking clarity around relationships. I think it's very likely that a lot of people are going to feel the heat. You know, a lot of people that think they've been able to do what they want, whilst general public has to do what they're told, that's caused a tremendous amount of anger and dissatisfaction. So I think we are going to see uh, a lot more outspoken uh, comments, uh, sentiment and feelings around that. I suppose if we look at Jupiter in relation to the Sun, they are in a disassociate trine, uh, uh, sextile, sorry, just about, uh, just one degree. Jupiter moves into Pisces the last three days of this year. And so that is good because Jupiter rules the sign of Pisces. And of course, it will be returning to Pisces to join up with its co-regents of Neptune. Neptune, you can see, actually makes quite a, a lovely link to Venus and Pluto. Venus's retrograde has been causing a lot of comment. Um, uh, for me, Venus in Capricorn is very much about uh, established mores, but it's also to do with traditional relationships, and it can be to do with um, sort of our roots around relationships. So the retrograde could be, along with the transformational energy of Pluto, that there can be some movement on some situations that have been a bit stuck. Maybe some relationships reproachments occurring, but equally, if someone doesn't feel that uh, people are coming up to the required standard, you could argue that Pluto conjunct Venus means that people in public office, a very public position, Capricorn, very much to do with being in the public uh, gaze, well, however much charm that they've applied to situations in the past, I think it's their deeds that are going to be scrutinised with a great deal more vigour. So over this next 13-week period, I feel that we are going to see uh, the need for us all to be virtuous about managing our space, our time, our energy with that uh, group of influences in the sixth house. Um, the sun moving into the sign of Capricorn means that it's joining with Mercury, obviously Juno at the moment, uh, Pluto and Venus. So we've got a big stellium building up. And of course, although Mercury goes into shadow towards the end of this year, this is going to be the dominating pack of energy as we make our way towards the end of 2021. But we need to think further than that. This event gives us a glimpse of what the next 13 weeks will hold. So my proposition is that there's going to be some almost schizophrenic uh, elements to all of our lives with the moon opposite Pluto. People can get very emotional, very outspoken, and sometimes, you know, will focus on their own emotional security. Other times want to push back and verbalize their dissatisfaction, but particularly with the leadership. I think that's what this chart speaks towards. And however much charm is applied to situations to try to brush things over with that Venus dominated uh, conjunction with Pluto, and also that Venus midpoint, orientated midpoint, Venus governs the sign of Libra, uh, linking with that fixed start of Algorab, I think we are uh, potentially seeing some stresses and strains in Eastern Europe in terms of what's going on on the border with uh, the Ukraine. We have China making noises about Taiwan, and obviously uh, interest rates are starting to come up. So in this chart, with the second and eighth houses, very much to do with everyday finances and longer term finance, I personally do feel that that the cost of living and inflation is going to be a big feature of next year. I can only be truthful about that. But please stay with me for your individual zodiac sign forecast, which I will uh, present to you next. So Aries, well for you, the sun moving onto the fixed uh, 
the, the last of the cardinal points, the earth points, is really interesting because you are kind of in keeping with the overall view for everyone else. You know, it's very much a time when you could be thinking about career, your role in life, but there could be some trans transformations as well. I think your professional relationships could be um, the areas that you're looking to transform. If you're seeing someone in a romantic context and it's going really well, you may want to formalise the tie in you know, quite an old-fashioned way. So marriage could call out to some rounds. It could be moving in for others. Of course, Venus's retrograde can also see us thinking deeply about old relationships, even family relationships. So the relationship with your father particularly could be one that comes up in your thoughts, even if that person no longer is physically in your life, has passed away. Now, because we do have a tremendous angle between uh, the uh, position of Mars, your ruler, and also the part of Fortune and Saturn, you know, Saturn's in your sector of, of friendship and longer term future, but so is Jupiter. So, you know, there is every reason to be optimistic about where the direction of travel is going. But I think with the moon in your fourth house, you, you know, whatever you're doing in the wider world, it has to be tempered by how it feels. Does it feel comfortable? Do you enjoy your job? Is it personally, emotionally satisfying? If you're just chasing goals and ambitions and that's your only focus, the next 13 weeks you may achieve some of those. You may score some successes, but you need to make sure that it feels good. So balancing home and your wider ambitions uh, is going to be the key for this next 13 week period. Now for you Taurus, there's been such a lot of thrust over the last few years to change your life. But Taurus people don't easily make changes. You're a fixed sign, your ruler is Venus, you love what you know, and whether it's those routines or your appreciation of classy merchandise, or it's more of an earthy connection to the world through uh, organics, and simple living, everybody's different, maybe gardening for example. Uh, you know, everyone can relate to their zodiac sign in their own unique way because of course, you know, you, in your personal chart you may have planets in Gemini. Someone else may have some gathering of energy in Aries. And that's why personal astrology is so important to understanding your direction of travel in life. But in general, there is a lot of thrust here for you to change things up. But it could be around your work that you're thinking of doing that. And if you do feel a bit limited around travel plans over this Christmas holiday, yes, of course, you're going to be very frustrated. But I think there is an opportunity for you to enjoy perhaps the intimacy of the relationships you do have if you're spending time with other loved ones. If you're spending time on your own, for sure, if that's something that you're not choosing, that can obviously be something that's not ideal. But I think there's every chance that you'll be thinking with quite a lot of excitement about what this next 13 week period can bring. Change is definitely in the air, and I think change can be as good as a rest for you. So if you look at it in that light, and also with Neptune collaborating with your ruler, Venus, so beautifully, maybe some new friendships are going to start to develop for you. Maybe it's a new job with Saturn in your 10th house. Now, uh, Gemini, for you, the cluster of energy in this particular event is very much to do with the deep and intense 8th house. This transformational period is tempered by the fact that Saturn is in your sector of truth, and of course can be a hard taskmaster, and that's jammed up against Uranus in your 12th. So the truth of some psychological realities in your life may be very, very hard to ignore. You know, whether your ascendant is in Gemini or it is your sun, or you've got a pack of energy there uh, and, uh, you know, some other key uh, planetary influences. I think if you're uh, trying to work out what the next 13 weeks will hold, I think it will be quite intense. I think it is about getting beneath the surface. You're so fleet-footed and able to flex and be nimble and 
make people laugh, get on with lots of different people. But it's not about that this particular time in your life. I think it's more about getting more closely in touch with what is really, really essentially important and where you want to invest the most of your energy, whether it is a relationship, whether it is a business idea, whether it is something to do with your natural gift for writing or publishing, whether it is to do with your love of travel, you need to feel utterly gripped or walk on by. And that's really what this next 13 week period is saying. But with that position of Mars and the part of fortune in your seventh house, sex could be very much part of your thinking. Even if you're not with somebody, it could be on your mind. And part of this is coming not just because of the enjoyable pleasure of intimacy, but because you might be craving a connection with someone. Now, of course, I may get other Gemini people writing to me saying, I've done that. I'm quite happy, thank you. Okay, I get that. But think of where you would get the most challenge and transformation from, where you can transmute yourself in a very deep and profound way. That can be your relationship, even if it's, you know, spending time with a lovely animal or uh, on a hobby or investing energy in a good cause. Wherever you're really devoted, that is really intimacy for you at this time. Cancer. Now, of course, having the moon in this particular event in your sign is a really interesting thing. The polarity that that creates between your need as a sensitive human being with all that seventh house energy in your opposite cardinal sign of Capricorn, it's saying all day long about relationships, isn't it? But relationships don't have to just be with other people. It can be our relationship to relationships. It can be our relationship to ourselves. It can be the relationship we have as we go in and out of shops with the way people open doors or don't, how that feels to us. There's all sorts of relating to be done with energy in the seventh house. There's also competitive relating where we have to link with people that we need to engage with professionally or maybe you know, it's in a local organisation that we sacrifice our time and energy. There may be someone you find tricky to deal with. This is all about relating. So it doesn't have to just be around romance, for sure. It can be about friendships as well. Uranus in your 11th house is encouraging you to really open up your uh, vision of what your future forward situation can be. With Saturn squaring it, Perhaps money is part of the equation of whether you can take the steps forwards in the way that you want. But how you connect to others, and as I said, it doesn't have to be in a romantic, sexual, intimate capacity, but how you relate to others is the critical thing that you're going to be uh, uh, working on, in, in incurring, uh, feeling, experiencing over this next 13 weeks, for sure. Now, Leo. Now, Leo, for you, as I've been saying for some time, you've been so self-sacrificing over recent years. And, you know, and then now with Saturn and Jupiter in your seventh house, just before Jupiter moves into your eighth of deeper love. So what you're getting back from other people is important. And of course, Saturn in the seventh square and with Uranus in the tenth. You know, if you're in a business relationship, which isn't very gratifying, whether it's working for a big supermarket chain, working for yourself, or working for a smaller organisation, you need to feel that you're valued. And because of all this pack of energy in your sixth house, activated even more by the sun's arrival on this winter solstice into Capricorn, whatever you're doing, wherever you're being purposeful or sacrificing, you need to gain some personal satisfaction from it. So if your world is supremely well ordered and you've got it all worked out and, you know, it's all uh, slick and like a well-oiled machine, that may give you a certain amount of satisfaction. But I think you're needing satisfaction plus over this next three months. So a change of work is a real possibility for a lot of of Leo people, or for all of us, or many of us who make New Year's resolutions, I'm sure someone will, will write to me and say, I never ever make a New Year's resolution. How can you say that? But for most of us, we 
try at some level to think well this is what I'd like to get out of next year mine it is actually I do have a Leo midheaven and my Uranus is in Leo as well mine is to get fitter next year because it's been a very stressful year with moving trying to catch up with work and I know that I need to be more you know to get fitter so if you're someone who sets your intentions around you know, more physical activity for the next 13 weeks, brilliant. Because Venus is in the mix, if you can go along with a friend where it's possible or uh, have a, a, a sort of situation, even if you're exercising in the comfort of your home, but you're sharing information with each other to egg each other on, I think that can be absolutely superb. Now, in terms of a romantic situation, if there's a lot of give in your uh, in your world and you're the one doing all the giving and your partner tends to take that for granted and does too much of the getting I think Pluto and Venus is really important and because the moon's in the 12th house uh, and is opposite Pluto and Venus uh, something could come into the open over the next 13 weeks and it may be you articulating your uh, unhappiness with being taken for granted so I think there needs to be a fairer share of domestic chores if you're in a living re relationship and that's not the case at the moment however with mars conjoining the part of fortune in your sister fire sign of uh, sagittarius and also with saturn forging a good link with mars even if it's an awkward link with uranus if you're if you're you know looking for a relationship and you do find one over the next 13 weeks if it's someone that you can collaborate with and you have similar kind of core practical values, um, but also there is a dash of attraction, that tie could come about in the most ordinary of situations just when you're not expecting it. So I hope that happens for you if that's something you would like to happen. Now Virgo. Virgo for you having all, these, all this energy in your fifth house, but Mars and the part of fortune in Sagittarius, that's interesting. So a lot of potential to play just at a time when our ability to mix and mingle could be limited by rules and regulations, depending on wherever you are in the world. But I feel that if you can play host or enjoy that, maybe you're wanting to improve your physical home through what you buy in the winter sales, you know, soft furnishings, whatever. Um, and of course, Neptune's in your seventh house of relating forging a beautiful link with Venus in your fifth house of joy and romance. If you do meet someone, I think this chart on the whole is very, very positive for you, particularly with Jupiter about to move into your opposite sign. So whether that is in a kind of friendship context, uh, someone that you can uh, just enjoy hanging out with, get in to know whether it's something more profound. If you're someone who's a crafter, and Virgo people are often brilliant at crafting, your creativity is going to be absolutely fantastic over the next three months. So expect to be jolly busy. And I think you're going to be really uh, enjoying what you're, uh, what you're creating. Because with Saturn in your sixth house of uh, your attention to detail, your meticulousness, your ability to be very dedicated to what you do, but forging a good link with Mars, that home-based business or hobby or interest or community-based enterprise can really be given a boost, but it's going to be your personality. You've got your ruler Mercury in your fifth house of this event. That's really, really positive. It can see you uh, bubbly, amusing. Your sense of humour is one of your great gifts. And, you know, with Venus conjoining Pluto, that's very, very attractive. Is someone about to enter your orbit and create a cosmic moment of magic for you? If that's what you would really like, I really wish that for you. Which brings us to Libra. Hey, Libra. Well, this collection of energy in your fourth house, including Venus on Pluto, you know, those two are pretty well squared up to my ascendant, which is just under 24 degrees, 23.50, I think. So, interesting. Been interesting times, hasn't it, for a lot of Libran people over the last few years. Very much about setting boundaries. Someone may want to 
re-enter your life, I feel, over the next 13 weeks, which could give you quite a difficult decision to make, especially if you feel that they've behaved in a really crummy way. I think the midpoint in your sign in the fifth house of this overall event and the moon being right close to the surface means it's difficult for you to hide your emotion. So moon opposite Pluto, if someone does want to make it up with you around a family situation, you've got a big decision to make. I wouldn't tell you what to do. You just need to be really mindful that Uranus, the planet of freedom, is in the part of your chart to do with devotion. And Saturn's in the part of your chart to do with your joy. If your devotion and joy have been diminished by other people's lack of appreciation and awareness to how... Um, delicate and diplomatic you've been in the past, how supportive you've been, and you just feel that it's just going to go back to all the old patterns, that could really diminish all the gains that you've uh, made for yourself, the hard inches. It's almost like, do you remember Monty Python? And they did this thing about uh, rock climbing, but it wasn't rock climbing up a, up, a, up a steep cliff, it was actually rock climbing up a high street. But they shot the film so it looked like they were going up a steep cliff. I mean, obviously, they were typically English and nutty, uh, and we loved them at the time. Um, but you have gained those inches forwards from that point where you just felt everybody overwhelmed your boundaries. Do you want to give that away easily? And with Venus on Pluto, someone could pour on the charm, pour on the leverage. Or, it's, or is it you that's going to be using lots of charm and leverage? Perhaps it's necessary. Perhaps it's what's needed. I think for a lot of Librans, a change of home or a change of the way you live in your current home, either by improving it, making it more comfortable, more secure, more peaceful, uh, spending more time in the garden if you're in the southern hemisphere. All those things are possible over the next 13 weeks. But most of all, you need to maintain your emotional and spiritual sanctuary. Don't give that those gains up easily. But equally, if you're in a more happy family environment, it's possible that somebody is introduced to you through the family, maybe even a sibling, and it could be a real hot attraction almost straight away. Scorpio, now you've got your ruler, your traditional ruler Mars in your second house. That's good for money, but it's also good to enjoy all the traditional moments of this time of the year. But that clustering of energy in the third house suggests there is going to be some important communications, letters, emails, contracts, uh, maybe some information going backwards and forwards with people in your community, maybe even siblings. All those areas are going to be very important for you over the next three months. And your energy and your ability to be very compelling in the way you express your ideas is going to be very, very strong. Now, the moon for you is in your uh, ninth house, which is very much about travel. So the limitation on travel that we may be experiencing almost straight away, I actually think that this next wave will not be, I think it will grow quickly, but I think the way that people flex to deal with it and the medicines that are used to manage it and the information that we all uh, take in and the way we make our own decisions, I think it will all go quite a lot quicker than the earlier stages of the, of the virus because I think we're all sort of learning that you have to live your life at some level and so you can't live your life only in fear and caution and it gets very very hard to do that all the time it, it, it so I think you could be very vulnerable in terms of expressing your sentiments around whatever point of view you would have but also don't be surprised if you buy yourself a new vehicle over the next three months. Sorry to my Southern American friends. I once said that in a video many years ago and someone said, we don't say it like that. We say it as vehicle. So I'm very sorry I was any playing. Um, so you could get yourself a new a vehicle over the next three months. Equally, maybe you're going to start to have a connection with someone through their mentality, through their values. And that for you could be very exciting. But with Saturn in your fourth house of emotion 
and Uranus in your seventh house of relationships, anyone who enters your life in a meaningful way cannot in any way impact on your need to be a free spirit. That's the critical uh, factor. Now, Sagittarius, for you, money makes the world go round, doesn't it? We all know that there is some truth in that. But has it become so much of a preoccupation that you've forgotten other parts of your nature that are really so important? I mean, having Mars in your own sign in this particular event is about being a freedom lover, which you surely are. Having Saturn and your ruler Jupiter in the third house of this event is about expressing your ideas, which you have a gift for. But having that cluster of energy in the second house does, I think, mean that you will be thinking about your core foundations. You will be thinking about earthy matters. You may be hitting the January sales uh, or the winter sales, uh, you know, and wanting to snuffle yourself some bargains, and you would say, well, who doesn't at this time of year? Well, not everyone is a consumerist, but I take your point. What I would say is that with Venus conjoining with Pluto, your values are really under the celestial spotlight. If you're too caught up with luxury, the luxury end of items, and not maybe appreciative enough of what you have already, that could be the lesson of Venus conjunct Pluto. It could be that your uh, attitude to values is really beautifully aligned, but you experience other people that seem to be very materialistic and that's a turn off to you. There's no one way that astrology works for any one of us, let alone you know, one twelfth of the population. But I do feel that you could do well financially over the next three months, but with Pluto on Venus, if you try to leverage things in order to get what you want, um, so you want things more on your terms, then that could be a problem. So I would take the midpoint of this particular event, being in Libra, and try to find a balance between your desires and the desires of anyone else you're interacting with, and find a nice equilibrium between the two. If you do, I think you'll find that your finances will improve. I wouldn't try too hard. That's really the uh, lesson of this uh, cardinal uh, quadrant. Also, I would say that with Saturn in a square with Uranus, if you try too hard, the immediate outcome is going to be stress. So, you know, if you're working hard, trying to flex and pivot to deal with COVID, keep your income intact, totally respect that. Uh, and it could be very stressful if you're in hospitality, for example, and you know, there's a real contraction again. It's been so brutally difficult the last couple of years. And I, I really feel for you. So use your brilliance at being very, very flexible, mutable, to find different ways that you can attack opportunities. But I wouldn't try too hard. You are going to need at times just to rest and just enjoy those, you know, few simple creature comforts which are so important to us all. Which brings us to Capricorn. Now for you, the sun returning to your sign on the back of this winter solstice this is fantastic. And it also means that you're in charge really of the next 13 weeks. Uh, celestially, this is your, you know, you're a cardinal sign, you're a leader. You set the standard, to set the bar high. You know, however hard people work, you're the one who will say, yes, but we could work even harder. Your dedication to your uh, loves, whatever they are, whether it's your social life, your work, your hobbies, your children, is legendary. You know, you keep chipping away. But if you are single, Venus can join in with Pluto. Someone could be entering your world over the next three months. It could be really exciting, especially with Neptune uh, in that beautiful sextile with both uh, Venus and Pluto. It could be a meeting of a spiritual kind that enters your life as much as a romantic one. But of course with Mars in the 12th house, if there is any old stuff that's still washing around in the back of your being, you know, whether it's past hurts that make it difficult to live in the present, have trust, you know, you can be a very cautious sign at the best of times. Or is Mars going to bring someone back into your world from your past that you thought was out of it for good? It's a fascinating situation, 
but this chart generally is very good for you to perhaps give yourself a, a dramatic personal makeover in terms of your presentation, your hair, your clothes, your wardrobe, but it also can be a time when more than one person is really almost, you know, obsession would be a strong word, but certainly deeply fascinated with you. Don't be surprised by that. And with Uranus in a great link with Mercury in your sign, your creativity, what you're starting to, you know, really set your intentions towards achieving next year, it can be uh, rearranging parts of your existence or trying things in a fresh, revitalized or even innovative way. It's very, very exciting. So I think new things are coming into your world is the summary of your situation. Money could be a bit tight and I wouldn't be too wasteful with the money you've got. Aquarius. Well, having this gathering of energy in the 12th house. Once the sun enters the sign of Capricorn, uh, some Aquarius people can go through a dip in their physical vitality, which lasts until the sun enters Aquarius. Last year it entered uh, on, well, earlier this year it entered on the 19th of January, particularly early. Sometimes it's the 20th, usually the 21st. So this year it's going to be the 20th of January. So the next four weeks particularly, I feel that the need to sort of squirrel yourself away and recharge your batteries is going to be strong. And if that's the yearning you have and you can manage it around the physical and practical demands and obligations you have, then that's no bad thing. Venus conjunct Pluto is deep and it's very psychological. It could see you very, very nostalgic about situations or people from your past, or it could see people from your past reaching out to you in a way that you just haven't anticipated would happen. I think with Mars in the free spirit of the 11th house for you, in such a great link with Saturn in your own sign, you, like Libran people, have had to work really, really hard in recent years to clear out of your life all the kind of bad energy that hasn't been very positive. Some of that energy may not be to do with people actually saying bad things to you or being bad people. It's just not good energy for you. Dead energy. You know, living in places where we may feel everyone around uh, the situation may seem superficially to be entirely pleasant people. But for Aquarius people and Libran people particularly, there's been such an extension of your psychic antenna drawing up lots of energy and that's not been easy and some of that energy is not being constructive so it's important to protect you give yourself a force field that keeps away people can almost be like psychic vampires if you like so do be conscious of that if someone wants to come back into your world what's the motivation for it you know is it pure is it, are they owning maybe some of the things that went wrong? You can be a very honest upfront sign, um, quick to acknowledge your part in situations. If other people just want to brush some, you know, difficult stuff under the mat, that's going to be a real tough decision for you, I think. In terms of, uh, of planning and thinking about what next year holds for you, I think you can dive deep now and use this period to really propagate and plant the seeds which will eventually start to shoot up once Mercury enters your sign on the 2nd of January and then once the Sun enters your sign on the 20th. So then you're going to really see an uplift. I know Mercury goes retrograde on the 14th of January and of course it will be in shadow from the end of this month. So there could be a, a period of time where some ideas don't quite gain traction and then others that maybe you don't take so seriously to begin with actually come storming through and turn out to be uh, very, very productive for you. But I think generally for the immediate month, you may need to just hunker down a little bit. But the next quarter can also be a time when you can use your supremely attuned psychological skills. You know, Aquarius people are often called armchair psychologists and for good reason. You're brilliant at understanding human nature, but often in a more detached way. It can be more challenging to emote how you feel, I find, with Aquarius people without really sounding, you know, hyper-logical. must tell you a joke. I said to my wife, how do you know when an Aquarian makes love? And she said, 
how? And they said, well, they've still got their glasses on. And thence whence I took my glasses off. Sorry, had to share that. I just thought it really tickled me about the detachment of Aquarius people. And I think you'll know where I'm coming from, even if you don't wear glasses. So, yeah, so I think initially it's going to be quite a lot of soul searching, but you're tuning into what's really deeply important for you. And it is exciting what's coming next year. Your finances particularly can really pick up, particularly if you've been beavering away with great intent behind the scenes for a very long time. Which brings us to Pisces. Jupiter, your ruler, just on the cusp, on the anartic degree, just not quite in your sign, nearly there. It's coming. The last four days of this year, I think. Uh, which is absolutely fantastic. And of course, then it's going to go into Aries on the 10th of May. For sure, there's a retrograde. Uh, but finances are looking brighter for you next year. And all this 11th house energy, if we didn't have COVID, I honestly think that you would be having a very sociable time. And also, you could be taking the lead with Mars right at the top of your chart. The moon in a very uh, warm and affectionate part of your situation what's not to like well Saturn in the 12th house Saturn in the 12th house square in Uranus in the third you've got to avoid people who have low energy who gossip who haven't got your best interests at heart these people really can suck the energy out of you if you stick to the people that you really trust you really like Neptune, your ruler, forging a fantastic link to Venus and Pluto. There may even be one friend or someone through work who's really strongly attracted to you, but may not have quite showed their hand. Saturn and Jupiter in the 12th house, uh, just maybe shy. Maybe they're scared of a rejection. Could be someone who's attracted to you. Or maybe the Venus conjunction with Pluto is an opportunity to put uh, a friendship that struggled a little bit on a better foot in. Um, but I think I go back to my original point. Don't give too much of yourself away if you're not sure that the other party is utterly sincere. If they're utterly sincere and it didn't work out for whatever reason in the past, but you'd like to be on better terms, this chart's really good. But if you're not sure, then do be cautious with Saturn in that 12th house. But generally speaking, if wherever you are, you are and able to mix and mingle and connect to people, it can be a very uplifting time for you. The next quarter can be very exciting, particularly once the sun returns to your sign. But Jupiter moving into Pisces is the big news story as this year comes to a close. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to get your free daily written horoscope directly to your device each morning by clicking on the link below. If you want to watch your year 2022 in-depth deep dive forensically detailed forecast, please see the link beneath this video. But for now, uh, take care and wishing you a very happy winter solstice.